Hi, welcome again to the Microscopy 101 YouTube channel. So today, uh, talking about Zen Core Scaling, and this is for the licensed version of Zen. So uh, there are unlicensed versions which have different menus, um, but the licensed version of Zen, it requires that you set up uh, some extra parameters and uh, in some ways it's easier because you get some uh, some interactive graphics that you can work with. So I'm going to make some assumptions that you've uh, used Zen before and that you've got some sort of familiarity with where things are and uh, we do get a lot of questions about scaling so this is really to help you uh, if you have any problems if you lose the scaling uh, sometimes after uh, the IT people have upgraded things, things might disappear, uh, particularly with um, with uh, scaling, it seems. So let's just go through and look at what you need to have in place to ensure that you can get correct measurements from your microscope. So the scaling is really about assigning a physical uh, size to each objective. Um, and this is going to then let you make measurements which are accurate and we generally would also look to uh, reference those measurements to some sort of graticule or stage micrometer. So that may then become calibration. So scaling is really about working out the size, but calibration is referencing it to something else. Now I've opened a program here called MTB. When your system was set up, uh, the engineer probably set up this MTB and it is important to get the right version of MTB for your version of Zen and they all seem to be called the same thing. So you need to just check that you're using the MTB version for the correct version of the software. And what this does, it lets you set up a uh, configuration for the microscope that you're using. The critical things are under the objectives. We put in a list of objectives from either the part number or the uh, at least the magnification for each objective. We also need to put in down here the type of C-mount and camera that we use. Now this MTB configuration is then used by Zen when Zen opens, it looks at the MTB and takes the information about the objectives and the scales from here to apply the theoretical scale. And um, so it's important that you get this right. And what I would suggest you do if you have this set up already is that you come up to here, file, and you save the configuration. This will save you a lot of time later should uh, this get changed by somebody or uh, deleted accidentally, perhaps by the IT people. Once you've got this set up, generally I, I suggest that you apply and then say OK. So let's have a look at Zen. And here I'm opening Zen Core. Your screen may look different to this, but we want to go to Zen Core and uh, free version. So this is typical as I've opened up the 2D acquisition, acquisition menu and you have various workbenches that you can add in here. Now I'm going to suggest you add in a tool other than the 2D acquisition called LightPath. And in fact, I'm going to move that up into here. So the LightPath, if you think about it in this way, it's like taking a hacksaw to the microscope and cutting it in half. And it shows you uh, the progression of the, the light capability. We're working here in a transmitted light microscope. Uh, it's the same 
idea in reflected light uh, because we then have the sample and in this case here we have the objectives and by clicking here I get a drop down list of all the objectives and really all I have to do is click on the objective that we're using there's a, a message here which comes up which we can disable if we uh, get bored with it uh, and that's telling me to move to that objective objective number 10 which I've done on the microscope. So now this is all that I need for theoretical scaling. So provided you've set up the MTB, then the light path will be available to you as a way of setting the scale. And really all I need to do is select from this drop down list the objective that we're using, and then we will be scaled in a theoretical mode. Now, just a word about theoretical mode or a theoretical scaling it's calculated and it's based on it knows the size of the pixels in the camera it knows the magnifications involved in the microscope so it's not necessarily a hundred percent accurate if we want to improve the accuracy we need to make a measured scale but all you need to get the scaling working is have the MTB correct uh, for the configuration of your microscope and then you will have this theoretical scaling. So let's just have a look at how we make a measured scale. So I'm just going to go into this uh, macro mode. You can see here the microscope. I've got a stage micrometer fitted onto the microscope. And what this is, is a scale etched, in this case, onto glass slightly different version for reflected light but on there is a, a an etched ruler and we know it's one millimeter long uh, cut up into 10 micron divisions so i'll pop that back on the microscope and that's what we're looking at here let's get it back in focus so that's a millimeter's worth of image you can see there now to make the scaling I need to add a workbench. So let's just first snap that picture. And you can see a scaling gets added. And we can compare that with the stage micrometer. And we can see that we're already quite accurate. That's 100 microns. Uh, these scale bars, instantly, you can make them any size you like and you can tilt them. Uh, we don't need to worry about vertical scaling because we're dealing here with square pixels. So it's pretty good. Maybe slight error there just at one end. So we add now a workbench called from the scaling workbenches called create measured scale. Add that in. And here we're asked to draw a reference line. So I'm going to come to that image and I'm going to draw a line. I want this to be as long as I can because it needs to be as accurate as possible. The longer the line, the better the accuracy. And we've got a calculation here for um, how wide those pixels are. Well, I know that line is one millimeter, which is a thousand microns. So if I make that a thousand microns there, there's a calculation and it says 0.43 microns per pixel, micrometers per pixel. So the width of one pixel is 0.43 microns. Now the trick here is to make sure we save the scaling by the same name as the objective, which in this case is 10x. So enter the name and save scaling. Now, um, it will save it, although it doesn't tell you it saved it. So just be aware that once you click on save scaling, you have saved it. So if we go back to the live image now, and we pick uh, the 10,
it hasn't worked. What? So that didn't work. So I've come back to here and I've drawn the line again. And uh, what I'm going to do now is instead of calling it 10x, I'm going to call it x10, which seems a little bit backwards, doesn't it? But if I call it x10, then it saves. Then we go back to the live image and you can see that the 10 uh, is now a measured value called x10. So let's go through that again, uh, as there are some important uh, lessons here. So we would go to the objective we want to calibrate. So this time it's going to be the 40, myself a, an image focused. You don't need to worry about curler illumination too much here, just to have an image that you can see the scale. I'm going to change here the light path to reflect the 40 times objective the one we're using, we get this message. So now we are on the 40. And uh, the theoretic scaling is shown here, 0.11 microns and snap. OK, we then go to the assign, uh, sorry, create measured scale workflow. We draw the line again, again, as long as possible. Gets a bit more complicated now. But that's 10, that's 200 microns, 200, and give it a name here. Now, I've, I've uh, realized that the name that you give it uh, is fairly irrelevant, but it must be a unique name for this objective. So I'm going to call this one again 40x and save it. So now when I go back to the live image, you should see that we're now working with a measured scale, which is 0.11 microns. Uh, again, we can just snap this image. We get a scale bar come up. And we can compare that scale bar to the, to the live image. Now, this should be a lot more accurate than the theoretical scaling. And yeah, it looks like it is. So to Summarize, we need to set up the MTB. This is the configuration program that tells you how your microscope is configured. Uh, that gives us then this light path mode when we come in. And then if we want to use a measured scale rather than a theoretical scale, we need to go to each objective, use a stage micrometer, make the scale and save with a unique name. Now outside of here, uh, if I go back, just discard that for the moment. Uh, under maintenance, you have an option here called manage scalings. And this shows you all of the scalings that you've got set up. And the, the reason it failed for me the first time is I had already a 10 times objective set up. So when you save the scaling, uh, make sure you're saving it with a unique name. And uh, you can then have a list of scalings. OK. I uh, hope that was useful. Um, a little bit complicated there in the middle, um, but essentially, hopefully you got the message. Uh, if you need any more information, take a look at the website and uh, look back here for more details on uh, training videos. Thanks for watching.